Today we're going to talk about the Snipewriter 5H in Samurun. In this series I break down weapons and how to use them in Samurun. The videos are short and they don't cover absolutely everything about a weapon, I just aim to make you feel a little bit more knowledgeable when playing Samurun. Number 1. The Snipewriter 5H, or as it's otherwise known, the Pencil, is a middleweight charger that was introduced in Splatoon 3. It's unique from the other weapons in its class as instead of charging to fire just one shot, it charges five rounds that can be fired off in quick succession. To compensate for this, the charges cannot be stored, the fully charged shots are individually on the weaker side and the shots cannot pierce through enemies. Number 2. The pencil takes 1.2 seconds to fully charge, or 72 frames. When fully charged, you get 5 shots that you can fire off in quick succession. Since patch 4.0, which happened in May 2023, the pencil deals 240 damage for each fully charged shot. If you hit all 5 shots on the same target, that amounts to 1200 damage, which is quite substantial when you compare it to other charges. Tap shots deal upwards of 60 damage depending on how long the charge is held for before maxing out at 240. If you run out of ink or jump, it takes 33% longer to charge your shots. The pencil cannot store its charges. Any remaining rounds held are lost when entering swim form or by throwing a bomb, but you don't lose the ink for the shots unfired. Roughly 30% of your ink tank is used when you charge and fire all 5 shots, meaning you can fully charge 3 times before you run out of ink. I'd recommend you start recovering ink after two full charges though, just to make sure you're not running on empty. The pencil has the second longest range of a charger behind Elita in Samurun. In the main game, the splat scope outranges it, but we don't have scope chargers in Samurun. It paints fairly well with charge shots and the ink refill is okay. It also has better mobility than most other chargers. You run faster and jump higher when you're holding your shots. Lastly, along with the bamboozler, the pencil doesn't pierce through enemies, which puts it at a disadvantage in comparison to other chargers. However, given its movement, ink tank and total damage it can put out, don't let its inability to pierce put you off, it's still a solid slayer of enemies when you time your shots well. Number 3. Since its damage buff in patch 4.0, the pencil is a solid slayer of enemies whilst also being able to provide support where needed. It can one cycle most bosses as its total 1200 damage is enough. Steel heads are two fully charged shots and bosses like steel eels and slamming lids are free. Scrappers take three shots to stun and a further three shots to kill. Drizzlers can be one cycled easily with four shots. Big shots, moors and flipper floppers all have 1200 HP meaning it's possible to one cycle all of them with five shots. Mauls are quicker to bomb however and floppers can be shot out of the sky if you have your weapon charged and ready to fire. You can reach fish sticks from the ground with partial or fully charged shots but I'd recommend climbing them if you're the person tasked with taking care of them. The ink tank on the pencil is also able to deal with throwing bombs at a reasonable rate but bear in mind that after a bomb throw you barely have enough ink left for a full charge of 5 shots. For lessers, you'll have to try and keep space and not put yourself in situations where you risk becoming overwhelmed. Tap shots do 60, so you'll have to get comfortable with tap shotting at some point. This is especially more important as your shots do not pierce through them. Bear in mind though that Kohawks take two full shots to defeat. Keep your space and damage them as much as you can to help reduce the pressure. Number 4. The pencil has a unique role in Summer Run that not a lot of other weapons experience. It is a supportive slayer. On your own, you can manage clearing bosses with some degree of ease, and as mentioned before, almost all bosses don't pose too much of a threat for the pencil. But sometimes you're not in the right position, or you haven't been able to fully charge your shots in time for a boss cycle. It's just the nature of the game, and things get chaotic very quickly. Lessers can pose a huge problem if you're not able to clear them or you're struggling to safely charge your weapon without being attacked by them. So whilst you do have the ability to slay with the main weapon, sometimes the game will take you out of that role and force you elsewhere. The reason I believe the pencil has a unique role as a supportive slayer is because of its ability to put damage on multiple things in quick succession, without necessarily being the person to actually kill the enemy. It pairs so well with many other weapons because of this, you're able to combine damage very easily. 
Just explaining this may not get across the point, so here are some examples of this. When you hit a Kohok once, you've just put 240 damage on them, meaning your teammate can help with the other 160. You can hit a Steelhead from substantially further away than almost all other weapons in the game, meaning one shot might just be what's needed to help kill it in combination with another player. The same works for Flipper Floppers. You can help damage them before they land, regardless if you can't get all five shots on them. You can work with teammates to help take down fish sticks very quickly. You can snipe steel eels down from positions of safety to help out teammates being chased by them. It takes three charged shots to stun a scrapper and you can do this for your teammates who can finish them off with faster weapons. I know everybody wants to be the person with the most boss kills, but you can provide invaluable support for your team if you focus on the bigger picture and recognise that it's a team effort rather than trying to win the most boss kills. Number 5. Like other backline or slower weapons with charge cycles, the pencil is best used when you're able to anticipate where you need to be or when you need to charge your weapon. This means paying attention to boss cycles, the escape routes you may have, and the lessers that might be converging on you. There's nothing more annoying than missing a shot on a steelhead because a chum hits you. Clear the lessers around your intended position first if possible, as this will extend the time you have to safely stand in one place to charge and fire your shots. Charges and other weapons that require charging are at a disadvantage due to their slow start and need to, to charge their weapon. They often have slower movement and worse ink efficiency too. Pencil is a bit of an outlier here because it has better running speed and jumping movement compared to most charges, but it still requires space and safety to fully utilise. It's also an outlier because it doesn't pierce through enemies, meaning that it's very easy to get overwhelmed when faced with multiple cohorts. You'll need to constantly keep moving with the pencil. You cannot remain in one place too long as eventually lessers will damage you. You need to use positionings on a map to your advantage, but also keep in mind that you shouldn't linger in one space too long as you can't pierce through enemies and you might end up wasting your time or not fully maximising the weapon you have. The pencil is an amazing supportive slayer to have on your team that can help reach far bosses and assist with team objectives. Once you get used to this weapon a bit more, you'll be able to take more aggressive positions and get the absolute most out of this weapon. I hope this video helps you appreciate the Snipe Writer 5H a little bit more. I honestly had so much to say about this weapon and so this is the really, really cut down version of it. So I'm sorry if I've missed stuff. Let me know what you guys think though. I will see you soon.